everyone. I'm Melissa McAllister, and you're listening to The Melissa Made Show. Now, for decades, I've dedicated myself to helping women break the cycle of dieting, navigate through all the fads, and change their lives through my nutrition coaching. Now, each week, I'm going to talk about everything from deep nutrition, mindset, self-care, the ideal workout routine, tips on how and why to implement intermittent fasting in your life, my favorite recipes that are not only crowd pleasers, but they're actually healthy for you, and so much more. Now, with small and consistent changes, you can defy aging while living a happier, healthier, and more heart-filled life. I'm so excited to show you it's possible with the right strategies that are so simple to adopt. Hey, you guys, welcome to the Melissa Mate Show. I feel compelled to make this uh, podcast, and I'm really hoping, <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face, really hoping to make it short, but my inbox has been inundated with my quote unquote thoughts on semaglutide or semiglutide. I'm going to say semaglutide because any doctor that's an expert in this field pronounces it semaglutide versus semiglutide. Uh, so just it comes out easier for me because I've decided to adopt it that way. So however you say it is fine, tomato, tomato. But there's a uh, semaglutide, which is the drug that is used for type 2 diabetics. Then we have, or semaglutide, excuse me, is the, the actual drug itself, the name of the drug. Ozempic is one that was created from the pharmaceutical companies to be used for type 2 diabetics. And then we've got uh, Wegovy, which was, I think, in June of 2021, uh, the FDA approved uh, semaglutide for weight loss. And so there uh, was Wegovy, and now we have Mongiorno and uh, what is it? Ribelsis, I think is how you pronounce it, which is the pill form of semaglutide, which I think can be used for type two diabetics and also for uh, weight loss. So my thoughts, uh, first and foremost, I want to say I am kind of, I'm unbiased at this point because, I mean, I've done a lot of research on it. By the time this airs, uh, Dr. Lauren and I uh, got together and created an ebook because as you could imagine, as a functional medicine doctor, as a functional a nutritionist, it was crazy. <laughs> and so we wanted to create some sort of guide to give people the idea uh, and the education on if they should do it, if it's right for them, and then if they are on it, how to get the best results. And her and I, as you guys know, we see so, I mean, we see so eye to eye on everything. And not that we don't see eye to eye on this particular uh, drug used for weight loss. She's, I think, just a little bit more enthusiastic about it than I am. And But that's the only difference is I still have reservations. Not that I'm not for it, but I, I'm still feel very reserved and she's ecstatic and, and I'm happy because she's, you know, she can prescribe it and she can help people on this journey where I can't prescribe it. Although I am, I do have clients that are on it uh, and there are pros and cons to it. And so what I really want to share with you today is I guess my biggest concern. So if you're thinking of getting on it, or if you are on it, and you're seeing results, I'm happy for you. I want to guide you. And this book that, or the ebook that we created goes much more into detail. I just wanted to give you a really quick kind of in a nutshell uh, thought process on it. So I have a, a place to direct people when they ask me, hey, what do you think about this? And uh, to hopefully help. That's the number one thing I want to do is if you're deciding to get on it um, or deciding whether you want to, or if you are on it, how can I help? because I want this to be a great experience for you, whether you decide to get on it or if you are on it to get the best results, because in my heart of hearts, I don't want you on it for the rest of your life. And they're saying that this is going to be uh, the, the number one best selling or most prescribed drug in history, which blows my mind. So it's obviously going to be used and I want people to have the best outcomes if they choose to use it. Okay. And so that's where I'm coming from. I'm, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you, you shouldn't do it. I'm not here to tell you, you absolutely should. That's going to be a personal decision. And I'm here to help you make that personal decision. Okay. So that being said, um, what 
the number one thing that you're, if you start taking it or decide to start taking it, or if you are on it now, you know this, uh, some people have the side effect of nausea, uh, but I think they're kind of, uh, because you do ramp up with the drug that they're finding ways to make that less of a problem. And so I don't think nausea is, is big of a deal as it was when it first came out and people were probably just starting on the higher doses or weren't having like Dr. Lauren makes a complex that puts other things in with the drug to keep that nausea, especially B vitamins at bay. So if you are on it, you're still experiencing uh, side effects of nausea. Uh, I've been told, look into it, ask your doctor, but B vitamins uh, really help with that as well. So something to consider. But it does. The side effect is it takes your appetite away. Um, I've had uh, some really close friends that have on it, and I have drilled them to to really understand the side effects, and they are not hungry. And I know that sounds so exciting. And uh, uh, Jonathan Herzog, you guys have heard me talk about him. He owns uh, the Vitality uh, Herzog Vitality Center, and they're another entity that will do telemedicine. And uh, we were talking about it and he said something very profound, which is one of the things that make me not say, don't be on this is he says, it gives you uh, food freedom or he goes, it makes you, cause I know there are a lot of people out there. I hear it on the daily basis that people are just constantly, that's the only thing that's on their mind is, you know, wanting to eat and to have that taken away and to not have that the chains, you know, the ball and chain of food on your mind 24 seven has got to be a wonderful feeling. Let's just be honest. If, if it's you're to the point that you finish a meal and 30 minutes later, you're like, I'd love to eat again to have that take it away is great. So it does 100% take away your appetite, which also means that it also kind of takes away from what I've been told your thirst, you know, that's part of appetite as well. So you have to be very good listen to me, if you're thinking about it or you are on it and you are not being very conscious of having something that reminds you to have water throughout the day, turn this off and go get yourself a drink of water (laughs) or know when you go into it, like I always say, find yourself a really cute uh, vessel to just have water with you all the time because you're going to have to remind yourself, you're going to have to sit in the corner of your eye and go, yeah, I should drink some water because you really can't trust your innate system of telling you, hey, I'm thirsty to have that water, which is why constipation is another side effect, but we're not gonna get into that right now. The one side effect that is the most concerning for me that I think can be very, very minimized is the muscle wasting, the muscle loss that happens. And the reason it happens is for a few reasons. First and foremost, you lose your appetite. So you you don't have the need or the want to eat. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy, I hear. And so you almost have to talk yourself into eating. And let's just be honest, I would be the same way. If I didn't have an appetite and I'm like, well, I got to get some calories in, I would go for, for foods I really liked. <laughs> you know what I mean when I say that? Like, I would be like, well, you know, Snickers has, you know, a couple hundred calories. It's going to taste great, blah, 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 blah instead of getting that plate of chicken broccoli with some melted butter on top, right? You just want something quick. You want something tasty. You're not eating that many calories. So you don't have to worry about over consuming calories. So the thought of having something that's not ideal for your health comes to mind. Although one of my girlfriends told me that sugar made her really sick. So that's another thing. Maybe it would help with sugar intake in the book, Uh, I did read a study where they actually say that there's some thought processes with this about using it also for addiction, uh, like alcohol, alcoholism or alcohol addiction, because it also pulls away the need to want the alcohol. That was just one study I saw. I don't know how big it was or, you know, how important it is in the realm of addiction, but if it is, how cool would that be? Right? So anyway, we don't eat so we don't make the best choices. And on top of that, we're not getting enough protein. And listen, if you're thinking about doing this or if you want it, weight comes off quickly uh, and you actually have to work really hard to not have it come off too quickly. Listen to me, listen to me. If you are on it, please don't be in a hurry to lose that weight for so many reasons. (laughs) But first and foremost, because the faster you lose it uh, and the, the less that you eat, 
the more muscle wasting that's going to happen. And this is huge. So what is happening is people are losing this, you know, astronomical amount of weight, which is good. You know, that, that extra weight on our body is not healthy and to lose it is great, but they're losing more muscle mass than they would if they were to do it just with the diet and exercise and lifestyle changes way more muscle because they're not fueling their body and they're not moving as much because maybe they feel nauseous or maybe they don't have a lot of energy because they're not ingesting a lot of nutrient dense calories. So your energy level goes low, your movement goes down, you know, you're not lifting the heavy weights maybe that you were before and you're not fueling your body properly to maintain and or build the muscle. Ladies, it takes, I mean, if you are eating on point and you are lifting them heavy weights, you're lucky to build a pound of muscle a month. Eight hour abs. That sounds like a dream, right? What if I told you, you could work on those abs while you dream? It's not too good to be true. I promise. It's something I discovered almost accidentally that gives you incredible results with minimal effort. The idea behind this is actually in what you're not doing. By giving your digestion time to rest, you allow your body to tap into its fat stores, hence working on that six pack while you sleep. All you have to do is eat within an eight hour window and leave the rest up to your body. I wrote the eight hour abs diet back in 2014 to help people learn about the importance of meal timing. Intermittent fasting has been a huge part in helping me stay in the shape that I am. For me, intermittent fasting means eating in an eight hour window, and I'll give you my insight on it in this free ebook. With proper meal timing, you will not only look better, but you're going to feel better too. So learn more by visiting melissamadeonline.com forward slash ebooks and get your free copy of the eight hour abs diet today. And when we start losing weight rapidly, uh, the muscle goes just as fast as the fat. And I tried really hard to find a bunch of studies. And the sad thing is, is they haven't, because this is kind of a quote unquote new problem that they're finding with this because this drug is just being so, I mean, it's, you guys know it's sold out. There's shortages. Everybody's on it saying it's going to be the you know most sold drug ever. Everybody's it's very popular. And so there's just, it's being used way more than it's being studied. Uh, and so it's just right now people, because they've been on it now since, you know, June, 2021, we've got people that are almost on it now, two years, really seeing the effects of not having the appetite, not fueling ourselves, and seeing this muscle wasting or the loss of muscle being way higher than it is. If you do it through the traditional style of, you know, lifestyle changes. And this is really, really, you guys really bad. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you, and this is all I want to say with this is thinking about doing it, or you are on it and you haven't really, you're like, Melissa, I kind of, I know what you're talking about. You know, when I'm hungry, I'm just grabbing something that kind of sounds good and not really putting much thought into to the quality of it, which of course, long-term as well, uh, can exasperate the, um, chance of getting, you know, a chronic disease or an autoimmune disorder because you're nutrient deficient. If you're going to get on it, or if you are on it, this is a perfect time twofold for you to really, really work on getting yourself into a routine of strength training and also eating a diet that is nutrient dense period. But even if it's just two good solid meals a day, or another side effect is you get full faster. And you guys have heard that the emptying, you know, the, the gastric emptying is slower. So you're going to stay fuller longer. So if it has to be two meals or three meals spread apart really wide, that has the, the, the greens in it, the proteins and the fats, and you have that strength training, it is more important to do it now when you're on it, this, uh, way Govi or Buongiorno than it is before, because if you don't, number one, you're going to lose the muscle and you're going to lose all that weight and be like, I look like a stick. I look like literally skin over bones. And I promise you won't be happy with that look. And not only did you 
not gain muscle during this journey of the weight loss, but you lost it. And it's going to be the older we get, the harder it is to put on. You are going to struggle so hard to get uh, that muscle put back on. So you want to create that habit now, 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 now to push really hard to minimize the muscle loss while you are losing this fat loss, which hopefully a lot, you know, it's going to be that subcutaneous fat, the fat that you see, but also that fat that's on the inside, which is a little more damaging than the, than the padding on the outside that you really focus on that by having a healthy diet and getting enough calories to still lose weight. Don't, don't rush it. Okay. Work to lose depends on where you're starting, but you know, if you can get the one to three pounds a month, of fat loss, mostly fat loss, I don't think you'll be on that drug forever because like I said, it's twofold. You're going to be able to keep your metabolism up. Muscle burns more calories than fat does. And you're going to be able to just feel better and look better. And not only that, creating that healthy habit will make it so that you don't have to be on this drug for the rest of your life. Okay. The pharmaceutical company wants you on this drug for the rest of your life. And uh, if there are no lifestyle changes from what got you to where you need to lose this excess weight, you will be on it for the rest of your life. It's expensive. It's been out for a long time, but not at this higher doses for weight loss uh, for the, the diabetics. It's a lower dose, but this higher dose, it's not been a long, long-term study. So just to be cautious. If you're thinking about it or you are on it and you're going to use it for weight loss, fantastic. Get yourself plenty of water, resistance train, and get some nutrient dense food in you, especially protein during this process so you don't lose the fat so that or lose the muscle and you have this great lifestyle you're creating while you are on this. Okay. Because when the time comes that you're like, I'm at my goal weight. I really don't want to be on this anymore. You're going to have a solid foundation for you to be able to continue to enjoy the strength training, to love how your body looks with the excess fat off your body, where you can see the shoulders popping and maybe the glutes. If you look at a lot of the pictures of people that have been on this drug that have lost the weight, they have no butt. <laughs> There's no absolutely zero butt because they have lost all the muscle and those huge, huge muscles in the quads and your glutes and your back and your chest are so important for keeping your metabolism up. So you don't have to eat 1200 calories a day to not put weight on. You're going to have muscle as furnace. That's going to help you allow you to have a little bit more food, enjoy more food and to have this beautiful physique with it as you're going through it. Um, so the goal is for you to change your body composition, not just weight loss. And, and that's where I see on all of these ads, what an effective weight loss tool it is. You don't need an effective weight loss tool. You need a fat loss tool. And the only way you're going to get that with this drug is for you to create that habit, uh, that lifestyle change. And I know you're thinking to yourself, well, I couldn't do it before the drug. I've, you know, I've really been struggling to get in the habit of exercising and eating better. This could be the catalyst. You know, maybe you have that addictive personality to food where you are thinking of food every hour on the hour. And this is going to take that away, allowing you to not do what I said in the beginning to go, well, you know, I'm just going to eat a Snickers because I haven't had any calories today. And at least it's something I don't want you to have that mentality. I really want you to come on this and say in your mind, this is short term for me. This is going to help me get fat off my body. And it's going to help me create a really healthy lifestyle that I can live with when I get off the drug. I tell you, you can create that if you've really struggled in the past to not be able to do it long enough, to make a routine of exercising, to make a routine of eating, you know, three healthy meals a day that have got lots of different colors and proteins and fats and all that stuff. This is your opportunity, the best opportunity you will ever have to get this weight off effectively and to build that healthy lifestyle, to maintain your muscle. So you're on this as short as you possibly can be. And it's not something in your mind you're thinking, you know, it's, it's the magic pill. I, I could take it for the rest of my life and not be hungry, 
eat what I want when I want and stay skinny. Okay. That's, that is personally my biggest fear. And so I wanted to put that out there. It's all about body composition. So regularly go find a place that you can have your uh, body fat tested and not just body fat, but also muscle, you know, those DEXA scan, those in body machines to be able to see if you are maintaining muscle mass, losing it, or man, I promise you, if you just get after it, you could increase your muscle mass while losing body fat and not, not being, you know, obsessed with food, which sometimes we get there. Do, 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 do. Keep in mind. So I'm talking to you about muscle mass. I uh, just want to end it with muscle mass is so much more than looking good. Like I said, it really helps, you know, raise that metabolism to make it so you're not eating like a bird. Uh, you can eat like a normal person. Uh, but having a good amount of muscle mass on you has also been shown to help with heart disease, uh, type two diabetes, and even dementia. And so it's having, keeping the booty while you're losing this weight is fantastic. Uh, but it's also going to keep that muscle mass up, make you tone. And as you get older, it's going to help protect you and keep you active and keep you golfing and playing with your great grandchildren. Uh, if we lose it now in our 20s, 30s, 40s, really difficult to get back in those 50s, 60s, 70s when you need it the most. Okay. So down in the show notes, I will have the link to, uh, I believe we call it the definitive guide to semaglutide. That was, oh, I, I did definitive, but Lauren made it rhyme with guide and semaglutide. So, <laughs> but you have the perspective of both the doctor and the NTP uh, trying to tell you what it is, if it's for you, what to expect with it and how to get the most out of it. Cause it's inevitable inevitable that this is going to be a part of many, many, many people's lives. And so I wanted to give you my two cents on that. So as always, I hope you wake up feeling prepared, especially with this decision. And I hope you go to bed feeling proud. Love you guys. Have a great day. Wow. We've reached the end, but before I leave you, I'd love to hear from you. After all, it's not every day that someone reaches out and asks for your opinion. And to me, your opinion does matter. So please share this episode with anyone that you think needs to hear this message. And remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Melissa McAllister. And until next time, thank you for being your own health advocate.